I grew up um, in the projects here in the South Bronx, and there was there were, there were a bunch of older guys who were doing it, like 73, 74, they were doing it, and I was just like, oh wow. Um, I was going to high school in the city, so I would take the subway, and you know, I was like watching the subways. You know, I just I saw this, and I just gravitated to it, and I just started adding my thing to it, and that's as simple as that. My dad and my mom were like, um, founding members of a church. It was it was in the summer and there was a speaking, you know, there was a preacher. And I'm in the back, I'm 10 years old, and I'm just captivated by by what he was speaking about. And, and the entire church, it, like the whole church, I mean I'm still getting goosebumps. It was, he was just on point. Whatever, you know, I don't remember. You know, it just I, it just spirit just grabbed a hold of me. I was just just wailing. I'm like I, I I just felt it. You know, you just feel his presence and it just it wraps around you and, and it's just and I left the church. I, I, I left the church that evening. It was on a Sunday evening, and I was just like, I was, I was not the same person. You know, you just, you just. I, I didn't know what it was. So that Monday, I was getting up early, and I was on the bus, and I was just like overwhelmed by his presence. I was just overwhelmed, and I'm in camp, and you know, and I'm like, I just, I, you know, there's no self. I don't know who to talk to. So I, you know, I'm just, I'm at camp. I come back, but I was never the same. But if that would happen today, I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to camp. I need to speak to someone because you no, know, because it happened. So I live, I, I live with that for the rest of my life, not knowing. And then um, God called me uh, in 2001, the summer of 2001. Um, I, I was, I was all over the place. I was, I say this to people, I was either on the verge of dying, or I was gonna be taken out. Something was gonna to happen to me. Um, and I say that now because I see it, but you know, but I was, I was flying all, all over the place, I was flying around the world, I was killing myself, man. I, you know, I was just doing everything possible to, you know, to get, to, to do work, to be, blah, 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 blah. I got into my car, turned the car, and I'm driving. And all of a sudden, like, I just, <gasps> and I just like lost my breath, and I like, I, I came to really quick. I'm driving and I pulled the car and to park the car, went to like into the sidewalk. I came out and I'm bleeding through my mouth. I'm like, what the heck's going on? So I, I got back into my car, drove home, I go to the hospital, and they, they gave me medication. Listen, just, you, you know, you're, you're, you're going through an anxiety issue. We don't know what's going on. This was two weeks before September 11th. All right, so I'm, I'm home, I'm drawing. Money my own business, I get a phone call from a friend in Boston. Yo, do you see what's going on? The attacks occurred. I'm like, oh wow. Two days later, I get a phone call from my therapist. He can't see me anymore because his wife died in, 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 in one of the buildings. So now on this medication, you have to, you know, you have to see a therapist to so talk it out so that they can remove you off the medication. I'm like, okay. Now what do I do? So one of my sisters calls me, listen, the North therapist was a pastor. I said, okay. You know, go see him, he's really cool. So I called him up, I said, I'm gonna see him. I, I started walking, you know, I, I came back to God, you know, I repented him, you know, you know, so we're going through this whole thing. And, and he starts prophesizing. I'm not going to any church. I, I, I decided to be a, a knucklehead, and I told God, God, all right, so it's gonna be me and you. I don't want any churches, because I grew up around churches, and I've seen the stuff that goes on. I've seen pastors have affairs. So it's just me and you. So God's laughing again, an idiot. So I want my wife winds up finding this church, really cool church uptown, and we're gonna start going to it. So the therapist comes, you know, we sit down, he says, listen, you didn't have a nervous breakdown. God said, enough. What you doing? And he grabbed you by the ear. No more. See, because when you're saved, you're always saved. And you want to be stupid, he's going to let you be stupid. You know, like scripture says, you know, when you want to carry on and, and, and do all this stuff, cool. Go. Be the worst you could be. Whatever. And he was allowing me, unbeknownst to me, he was allowing me to do, all, you know, to, to be arrogant, to be this, to be abusive. And he said, done. Now it's my turn. Now this is what we're going to do. 
but and yeah, and, and, and it's and it's been an amazing walk. Have a look back. No medication or nothing. We came up to him with like a proposal to paint ten cars inside yeah. and out and let it run in like the major stations. And let people vote on it, like let's say during a two-week period. And after the two-week period, they'll have, you know, the, the results in the paper. And um, I think the MTA will be embarrassed. Um, yeah, I got to trouble now.